Welcome to the Sandbox Comprehensive Player Model Guide. I'm Grotbert and we're finally diving into animating your model. Although a lot has happened since last episode, about 2 games worth, because of this we will be switching out from the Sauna PSX character in favor of the voxel character we've been using. It has more and better animations, so this should make for a more thorough series. I've taken the liberty of setting up the new model already, so go ahead and delete the previous, if any, download the files from the link in the description and place them in your projects as assets models folders. Before starting, check the pinned comment to see if there's any correction. Sandbox is always changing, so some things may not apply since the release of this video. Even the asset browser got a new look since last time, let's flatten folders by pressing this folder icon so only the files are shown and add a filter for models and anim graph only. Now, you can find the anim graph on the left like all of the other tools, you could open it here but I find it faster to open it through model doc. If you open your model, you have an anim graph section here in the nodes outliner and if you want your model to use an anim graph, you'll have to find it and select it. As I often forgot this step, I instead started creating them from here. Press new and a window will appear prompting you to name your animgraft. It also created a new folder for you to put it in, although I prefer to keep an animgraft in the respective models folder, to keep everything tidier, so do just that. And now that animgraft is connected to the model. To open it, you can press the edit button. Despite being created from the model, it's still empty. On the left you can configure which model to use, so press the empty model to bring up a search, find your player and select it. Time to give you an introduction of the animgraph viewport, it is heavily customizable, so I'll be going over the most important panels individually. On the left is a preview panel, where your model and animations are rendered. If you have material groups or body groups, you can change them here in the material groups and preview state. We don't have any currently, all of the controls inside the preview panel are similar to the model docs viewport. You can move the panels around by holding left click on the name, resize them by dragging the borders, group them together by placing them on top one another, remove them by pressing the X and, just like in model doc, you can add panels back through the view drop down here on the top. Down here I've grouped up many panels I don't need to be seeing all the time. The first is the parameters, which is what you'll use to control the animations. Next are the animation clips, where you have quick access to all animations in your model. Bone merge allows you to add other models onto the scene, think clothing and weapons. Tags are a little complicated, so we'll skip this one for now. On the right I've placed the properties panel, basically the node editor of the animgraph. Here at the bottom I've squished the console, because all it's useful for is telling you when and where something went wrong. You can clear it by pressing clear. The large checkered square is your workspace. It's not actually a panel, but it's where you'll be adding all of your nodes, which Unlike model doc where they are ordered vertically in a list, they are instead placed in this 2D grid and ordered left to right. Down the grid you have the controls. We'll go through this later since currently we've got nothing. Let's do something about that. Now, before there were animations, there was nothing. And before there was nothing, there was the final pause node. This is where all of your anim graph must lead to. You still have to add it first. To create nodes, right click on the grid, create node, and now you are presented with a drop down of all the nodes available. By the end of the guide you'll understand most of these and the ones you want are probably not that useful. Let's add our final pose node. And now let's connect an animation to it. Create nodes, animation, animation clip and with the node selected go to the node properties on the right and from the drop down select idle. Now we must connect the two nodes. Drag the out arrow where it says in of the final pose. Now our player should start idling and we can preview how the anim graph will run by pressing the big running blue man button. It sure is idling, but let's get a move on now. We're back in model doc, let's add a new simple animation. Animations, select all of the work animations with shift and as it has detected work in the name of the file, it will ask you whether you want to set up motion frames as well as looping. Press yes. If you look at these animations, you'll see the platform underneath is acting like a treadmill. This is the work of the extract motion node that was added on import. In the file itself, the player is just walking away from the center. With root motion, the motion from the root bone is taken into account, resulting in a model realistically moving around the world instead of walking off screen. Back to the animgraph, let's add these new animations through the clips panel, drag in the walk north animation and connect it to the final pose. 
Your player will now be walking. Oh, seems I forgot to set the animation to loop. Even though it is set to looping in model doc, check the loop box in the properties, do the same for the idle animation, and voila! You can even turn up the playback speed over here if you want him to go faster, set it to 2, and now he's zooming! We can't keep walking forever, we'll want to stop at some point, we need a way to switch between idle and walk. There are multiple nodes that can perform this task, but the most versatile is the state machine, create node and the state machine. Right now it seems like a useless node with no in connection, however, do note this little arrow in the top right of the node. This symbol indicates that this is a node that can be opened. If you double press, you'll jump inside the state machine, which is empty at the moment. To get out of the node you're in, press this up arrow or the back arrow to go back to where you came from. The house icon will bring you back to the start regardless. Once inside the state machine, you can right click to create a new state. Not a node, they are state machines, not node machines. Let's rename these to idle through the properties panel. Now create a work state. You can drag them around with left click, while if you hold right click over a state, you will create a transition. Drag it over a state to connect the two. This will create a transition which goes from idle to working. And if you select the transition arrow, you can set under what condition the transition will occur. Currently there is no condition, so it will instantly go into work. Press the plus drop down to add a condition, and for now, select time condition. After one second, it will make the switch. We'll also want a way to go back into idle, drag a transition from work into idle. You can copy the condition from another arrow with Ctrl C, and then Ctrl V onto the new arrow. Now let's get out of the state machine and connect the nodes. Order them accordingly, and if you want the nodes to snap to the grid in a really satisfying way, go on top, edit, options, general, and grid snapping. My setting is 16. Idle to idle, work to work, state machine to final pause, let's run the simulation, oh, we got a warning on the console, the state machine has no starting state. You can double click the warning to go right into the offending node. Oh. We'll need to define a state as the default state, obviously that will be the idle, so select it and check the start state box. Whoa, it's green now. We'll get to what the other boxes do. You can hover them to read their description, but as it stands, a lot of the stuff is going to fly over your head. Start the preview now, and we see that every second, he switches states. You can even set a random timer with random time between, to make it so it switches at random intervals. It still needs to clear the condition, in this case at least 1 second must have passed. So, even if it picks a random number lower than 1, it will only switch after 1 second passes, as it will have cleared all the checks. Right, select your condition and remove it with a trash can. We will be adding a parameter condition instead. Parameters are values that control an anigraph. They are called upon through game code, but we can preview them in the anning graph from the parameters panel. Create a new parameter using the plus icon and select uh, integer float bool. Oh no, this is some programming stuff. Okay, so boolean is either on or off, so a binary like 0 or 1. Enumerator allows you to have multiple named options, like a list. Float is a defined number range, with a minimum and maximum and everything in between. Integer is like a float, but only for whole numbers. So basically enums, but for numbers instead of names. Quaternion is a whole rabbit hole, basically Euler angles, but with another value, W. Vector is Euler angles, X, Y, Z, although you don't have to use them just for rotations, but positions too. And lastly, you can reset the parameters values with a blue arrow. Since for now we only need to go from idle to walk, I say a boolean is enough. Select bool and name it walk. Now we can finally assign the parameter in the condition. Select the transition arrow and in the condition select walk. To the right is a checkbox, which is whether the parameter is equal to off or on. We want it to switch when we turn it on, so we check the box. You can also press the equals to change the conditions into exclamation point equal, which will switch when it is not equal to, kinda useless for bool as it only has two options, ctrl c and then ctrl v the condition onto the other arrow and untick the box so it switches when it's off. And now if we start a preview, the guy starts and stops at our bidding. He do be stopping on a dime though, let's slow down his roll a little. However, that's all the time we have today, I'm told to keep the first episode short, so tune in next episode to learn about blending animations together.